we'll, we'll get going. Father, we give you honor and praise. Thank you for this moment of time. And we're asking, Holy Spirit, that you would take of this next hour and make it beautiful, exciting, full of your presence. And Lord, that you would do supernatural things tonight. For everybody who's, who's come to this time, Lord, I pray that there would be a supernatural encounter with you. And that, Lord, you'd move us downfield in these things. We just give you honor and praise and thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, again, it's good to be together, at least on Zoom, and to see each other's faces. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. And we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, we're going to be talking about tongues and interpretation. And uh, But before I do, it's just a couple statements that I want to make in regards to just spiritual gifts in general and the administration and working of them. One of them is um, just a great analogy that Greg shares and just as a reminder for us. You know, when it comes to manifestation gifts, um, actually, let me read 1 Corinthians 12 because that's, that's kind of where we're, we're coming out of this whole thing and now got to figure out how to get your lovely faces out of the way so that I can read the whole scripture. Oh, let's see, hopefully. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys, bear with me one second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Craig, I can't seem to get this. Oh, that'll do it. Huh. Yeah. Okay, let me go back in now. See if we got it. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. All righty, so 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. Can you see okay? Everybody, we good? Yeah, yeah. It looks good. That's okay. It. Thank you. All right. So 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11 says, um, now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. I just want to pause there for one second. I love how this starts off because it starts off by giving clarity that to each one, that's every single one of us, the manifestation of the spirit is given and the purpose for it is for the common good. And we'll get into that about uh, a little bit later, but those three things, so important. It's given to each one, every single one of us, the manifestation of the spirit, um, and it's for the common good. So to one, there is given through the spirit, a message of wisdom, to another, the message of, of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another, miraculous powers, to another, prophecy, and to another, distinguishing between spirits, and to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. And all these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one uh, just as he determines. And so as I said, as we're talking about tongues and interpretation, taking it from that passage, uh, just three statements. The first one, an analogy that Greg uses that I, I really think it's helpful when we're talking about manifestation gifts is the aspect of uh, having a package delivered. You know, when somebody brings a package, whoever it may be, to our home, it's either a knock on the door, a ring the bell, they leave it, and on they go to finish their, their job. Um, and it's just a very quick thing. And when it comes to manifestation gifts, we're kind of like those who get to deliver a package. And so whether it's faith or whether it's prophecy or whether it's healing, uh, we're given this item to come and to bring it and to drop it off. Um, and then the Holy Spirit enables us to do that. And I just think it's funny. It'd be so weird if when someone came to my door, knocked on the door and said, Hey, are you Tom Borsick? I said, yeah. And I said, yeah, it says it on the letter. And, and it must be your birthday. Cause on the back, it says happy birthday. And I go, yeah, yeah, it was yesterday. And they go, well, here you go. And so I go, thanks. I start to shut the door and they go, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on a second. What, what do you think's in there? You know? And, and, I go, well, it's, it looks like it's from, and their desire to be involved. Can I come in in a second and watch you open it? Aren't you glad I brought that to you? It would be so awkward um, to engage like that because the delivery person is meant to deliver. And so it is with manifestation gifts. It's 
It's a delivery that we get to participate in where God wants to make himself manifest and he gives us something with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and we get to deliver it. And that's our part. What happens after that with the prophetic word, with the, any of those other things, that's, that's for the Holy Spirit, that's for God to work with them to speak further. But our job is to, to, to be the delivery person of that. And I just love that analogy. It helps in so many ways. The second thing is when we're talking about manifestation gifts, and especially with tongues and interpretation, all manifestation gifts are for today. And we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, all believers, until we see Jesus face to face. So all of these manifestation gifts that we've been talking about and the ones that are left, uh, they're alive and well today. We, we get to manifest his presence as he gives these to us, um, and it'll continue until we see Jesus face to face. And then the last thing um, is that every believer can operate in all of the manifestation gifts as the Holy Spirit directs. And what I mean by this is um, sometimes um, well, when I was growing up, it was taught that you get one. And so if you're the word of knowledge guy, then that's all you get and be happy. And you, know, you get what you get, don't throw a fit. You know, and you can't operate in any of the other ones. And uh, that's just not true. You know, the beauty of the picture that's displayed is that the Holy Spirit is a conductor. And when we gather in a, in a service of some kind and he takes control of the service and says, hey, I'd love for this scripture to be read, I'd love for this to take place, I, could you bring that word? Could you remind this person of that? And this is beautiful orchestra that takes place. And what it means is that we each have the ability to operate in all of these gifts at any one time, but it's the Holy Spirit that gets to say, hey, Tom, you know what? shared this tongue or could you share a prophetic word or do you remember that scripture that i had you read or or whatever it may be but ultimately every believer can operate in any of these manifestation gifts but it's the holy spirit that directs them and tells us um, how to operate in them I, I love that as well so let's jump into tongues and interpretation and i'm going to read through first corinthians 14 starting at verse 5 and going all the way through 19 and I'm just going to teach through it as we go. I just found this to be a really great scripture to help us understand as we go. And so um, let me go ahead and start reading that, and then we'll stop and discuss um, as we go. So Paul says, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. Let me just stop there for one second. So as I was saying that we all get to uh, manifest these gifts, Paul starts by saying, I'd like every one of you to speak in tongues. He wouldn't ask us or say, I'd like you to do something if it wasn't possible. And so the opportunity for all of us to speak in tongues is there. But he follows that up with saying, but I'd rather have you prophesy. Because the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues. Listen to this, unless someone interprets. And he goes on to finish that, that sentence by saying, so the church may be edified. So the goal, the ultimate goal of tongues and manifestation gifts is that the church would be edified. That's, that's the bullseye. That's what we're aiming for with all of the manifestation gifts. And he says that unless there's interpretation, and we'll talk about both um, how we're built up personally and then also what happens when we bring in an, an interpretation later. But he said, I'd love for you all to speak in tongues. I'd rather prophecy uh, unless someone interprets, because the goal is to edify the church. When the interpretation with tongues comes, then it becomes for everyone. If it's just a tongue, that no one else around me gets to know what's going on, and I don't even know. We utter mysteries, and it's, it's our spirit communing with God is what's taking place. So I'm edified, I'm built up, but no one else really gets to participate in that. But when an interpretation comes, whether by myself or, or somebody else, brings an interpretation, then all of a sudden it changes the playing ground and now be edified. And that's also how we can tell where and when to bring a tongue. If it's in a church service, scripture says that there has to be an interpretation that comes with it. Uh, if we're in a church service and there's no interpretation, then it's not for me to share. I can keep quiet and build up myself um, and, and move forward. But if interpretation comes, then it, it's for the church so that the whole church can be edified. So let's pick it up in verse six. It says, now brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be for you unless I bring you 
some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction. Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as the pipe or the harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you, unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I'm a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner uh, unto me. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. Otherwise, when you are praising God in the spirit, how can someone else who is now put in the position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving since they do not know what you are saying? You are giving thanks well enough, but no one else is edified. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, but in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words, intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. And that reason also is because the goal is that the church would be edified. So one of the interesting things in verse 15, he says, I'll pray in my spirit, but I'll also pray with my understanding. And just like 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries uh, by the spirit. And so in verse 15, when he says, I pray in my spirit, but I also pray in my understanding, when we're praying in tongues, first of all, we can pray in tongues, we can sing in tongues, we can praise God in tongues, but it's, it's my spirit communing with God. And there's, there's not an understanding unless an interpretation comes. So what Paul is saying here in verse 15 is he's saying, I pray with my spirit, but I also pray with my understanding or with my mind as well. So there's the praying in tongues and the singing in tongues and praising in tongues, but there's also the op 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 availability for us to pray in our understanding for the things that the Lord's putting on our heart, for us to sing uh, in understanding and also to praise. And when we, we're doing it in our understanding, everybody else who's around us gets to hear, be encouraged, and participates with that as well. And so Paul brings a, a, a very clear or in the spirit, this is what it's like. And then also have the ability to do it with my understanding. And um, in the spirit, we don't understand. As I said, it's God speaking. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to God. And we utter mysteries by the spirit. But we are built up in the spirit. We're strengthened and our spirit grows. The other thing that takes place is our mind gets used to receiving what comes out of our spirit. Um, the more familiar, I guess you could say, with praying, praying in our spirit and, and understanding that mind is a crazy thing. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. I don't think I'm alone in this. But in the beginning of hearing prophetic words or, or hearing something take place where the Lord puts these pieces together, it, my, my mind's blown away. I think, how, how did you know that? I remember the first prophetic word I ever got, the person came up and said, man, I feel like the Lord is saying this. And they're laying out all these things before me. And I was like, how did, how did you know all of that stuff? And I didn't know a lot about spiritual gifts. And so they began to explain, well, this is prophecy and this is how the Lord's using it. But I couldn't get over it. My mind was going, oh, this is weird. This is, and as long as I am led by my mind, I kept wanting to try to figure out how did you know? Did you tell him or did you tell him? I mean, I'm trying to figure out with my mind. But the more I engage with my spirit, the more I gain understanding, the more I grow, uh, the more I understand what the spirit's doing. And then as the Holy Spirit begins to speak to me with a prophetic word or something else, I have to at times push my mind aside because it's still going, what kind of thought is that? Or what, where did that come from? Because it's, it's, it's my mind versus the spirit. And so we always have to remember when we prophesy, or I'm sorry, when we speak in tongues, outside of an interpretation, it's good for us. We're, we're building ourselves up, our spirit is growing, and our mind is getting used to receiving what the Holy Spirit says. When the interpretation comes along, it opens up a whole new ballgame because it's for everybody now, 
who's honestly within earshot. Everyone can be encouraged because there's an interpretation. Very similar to the prophetic when someone shares a word. But even in the interpretation, it could be thanksgiving. And I've been in a situation where the interpretation of the tongue was someone giving thanks to God, and, and that was the interpretation. It could be encouragement to the body. It could be a song uh, that really ministers to people. And I've even been in situations where as, as someone is, is sharing a tongue and interpretation comes, you have two what seem to be different interpretations that come, uh, but they're not different. It's all part of the one tongue and that was given. Um, and so with that in mind, what I want to look at next is what are gifts of tongues given for? Because I think this is, is, this is good and important for us to know is what, what are the gifts given for? Like why, what do we have healing? What do we have prophecy? All these things. I want to look at what are gifts of tongues given for? So in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 22, it says tongues then are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. And the thing I just want us to focus on is that at the beginning, he says tongues then are a sign. So they're a sign from God. I have three expressions where I want to show this. The first one is with Pentecost. Uh, we all know the story. I think it's amazing that what God chooses to do is he actually starts his church. He launches his church with um, tongues being released on the believers. Most of you know the story. They're up in the upper room. They're praying. And then in Acts 2, 3 through 4, it says, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What, it, what an amazing thing that's taking place where they're all gathered together and God uses tongues to launch his church. And this is the response of the people that are nearby in Acts 2, 6 and in 12. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How then is it that each one of us hears them in our native language? In verse 12, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? And so it's this sign. God chooses to use tongues to birth the church, to start the church. And what it causes is bewilderment, utterly amazed, perplexed, like a what in the world is going on? It's almost like the Lord wanted to say, hey, look. And so he used tongues to get the attention of the people and in a powerful way. And what happens as a result of this is the church gets birthed. With that as the backdrop, then Peter preaches the gospel and 3,000 get saved and are added to the church that day. What an amazing thing. But the biggest thing for us to gain from this is tongues are a sign and God continually uses it to launch things throughout scripture. And so this is one of them. Um, the second one I want to share with you is in a sign from God is also with Peter and Cornelius. You know, we know the story that takes place where Peter is praying on the roof and he sees the sheets come down um, and it shows to, you know, rise, kill and eat the unclean animals. He's like, I've never done that. And then the Holy Spirit tells him someone's knocking on the door. He goes down. It's, it's someone from Cornelius' house telling him, hey, you know, you should head over there. So he comes over. Uh, Peter being a Jew, he goes over to Cornelius' house. He's invited in. Um, he begins to share the gospel with them and stuff. And in Acts 2, verse, actually, that's the wrong reference. I apologize. But while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. And this is in Cornelius' house. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And Peter, I mean, this was all they had to see. Prior to this, it was all for the Jews, and they hadn't come to a realization yet that it was for the Gentiles as, as well. God begins to speak to him, sends him to Cornelius' house, and then in the middle of his speaking, I mean, you want to talk about messing up a message, he's preaching, the Holy Spirit comes on those who are hearing, and, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And they're astonished. Once again, there's the sign. And what that sign leads to is now the Gentiles have the ability to receive Jesus 
through faith. What an amazing thing that takes place through that. Another, again, astonished, blown away, you'll never believe this, what just took place because that's, it's a sign. It's a sign from God. And then the last one is Paul that I want to share is Paul meets some disciples along the way. And um, let me read this. And again, I just keep putting the same Acts 2, 6, my apologies. Uh, there he found some disciples and he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no, we haven't even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. So Paul said, then what baptism did you receive? And they said, John's baptism. And Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told them, excuse me, he told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is in Jesus. So on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then Paul places his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So another uh, sign that's given. And what this does is it leads to an open door where Paul gets to preach the gospel um, from, and it's, it's a great open door. And then the whole area ends up hearing the gospel as a result of this one, this one aspect of tongues being the gateway, if you will, for starting this off. So in three scenarios, God chooses to use tongues to birth the church, to bring the gospel to the Gentiles, and to open up an area where all of the people in that area uh, hear the gospel. Well, what an amazing thing. I know sometimes, you know, if, if we said, okay, well, if God said, hey, how, how do you think you know, we should um, usher in the church? Or how do you think we should let the Gentiles know? Yeah, I don't know that we'd come up with using a gift like tongues to, to bring just where people are going in bewilderment and oh my gosh, but that's the impact that tongues was to have as a sign. You know, I might think it'd be better if, you know, the, the heavens opened up and angels showed up in, in hundreds and began to sing and you know, it was gentle and a little bit, you know, but that's not what happens. You know, tongues comes and as a result, people um, find themselves blown away and then God uses that to open up a new area, whether it's for the church or any of those things. Um, so the second thing, let me talk also, what, what are tongues used for? So the second thing they're used for is to build up or edify the one who is speaking. And so when we're talking about this, this is just tongues. It's, it's not with interpretation yet. In 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. That's 1 Corinthians 4. And then in Jude, Jude 1, 20, but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in, the, in your most holy faith and praying in the spirit, and then also 1 Corinthians 14, 14, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, where as, as a believer, tongues is, is, is good for me. It builds me up. I get to grow in my spirit, and it, it enables me to, to be more open to receive what the Holy Spirit is saying to me um, and wants to speak to me. And so there's an edification that comes through for me. But when the interpretation is added to that, then it becomes an inter it opens up for everyone. And that's the third thing. With interpretation, it reveals actually the mind of God, similar in a way to prophecy. So let's look at a few passages here. So 1 Corinthians 14, 6. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will that be unless I bring you some revelation, knowledge, or prophetic word or instruction? See, when it comes to the public speaking, when it comes to tongues in a church setting or a service setting, there has to be an interpretation that comes because remember the goal is to edify the whole body. And so when we speak in a tongues and an interpretation comes, then there's the revelation, there's the knowledge. All of a sudden it's good for everyone who's participating in it. And then also in verse 13, it says, for this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. Because the interpretation is so important in the public gathering, I think it's, it's wonderful that not only are other people uh, able to interpret, but we're actually told in scripture, pray that you would interpret it. And that's any time, I would encourage all of us, anytime you hear 
a tongue to, to step aside and say, Lord, you know, would, you know, what are you trying to speak or what are you wanting to say? Could you give me an interpretation for that and see what the, the Lord does? Now, it's, it's not a translation. It's not word for word. It's not specific. It's, 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 a, um, it's an interpretation. So it's a bringing forth of the idea rather than word for word for word. And so it's like, honestly, it's like prophecy when the Lord gives you a picture. You go, you know, I kind of saw this. And then you begin to unfold what it is that the Lord's bringing. Um, and, and you bring forth that picture. So interpretation is the same thing. And, you know, honestly, I've, I've, at Northlands, there's been a lot of different ways that tongues has come. It's come through a song before. It's come through someone... Um, you know, and on a mic up front before Greg has brought a few, other people have brought a few or some. And then when, when it's brought, there's always an interpretation. Sometimes it's the same person. Sometimes one of the singers was singing in tongues and then the interpretation of that came and they begin to sing a new song or somebody shared on the mic and, and here's the interpretation of that. It can be the same person. It can be a different person. Uh, but the main thing is in the corporate setting, we always want it to be interpreted. And so that's why Paul says, hey, if you speak in a tongue, pray that you may interpret what is being said. And that's out of 1 Corinthians. Um, also in 1 Corinthians, uh, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy. Um, and then I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I'd rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. So to kind of sum this up in, um, in, 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 in what we're talking about is, so for tongues as, as the gift without interpretation, it builds us up, it uh, grows our spirit. Um, we're encouraged uh, because it's the spirit communing with God. We might not understand what's going on, no interpretation, we can't understand that, uh, but that's what's taking place. When the interpretation comes, uh, what happens there is that now it's for everyone and it can, it can edify everybody who's in the room or that hears it because the tongue is given and then the interpretation comes with it and that's where the edifying and the building up uh, comes with that as well. One of the things we wanted to do tonight in, in the practical steps of this is we wanted to give an opportunity, um, and we will in just a minute, we wanted to give an opportunity for you, if, if you've never um, spoken tongues and that's something you would like to do, I'd love for you to, in, in the um, chat area, send a personal message to Greg and, and say, hey, I'd love to be in a group with people that have never spoken tongues before, because uh, we'd love to pray for you. And, uh, and then if you have spoken tongues, then what we want to do is have a separate group where what we can do is gather in there, and it might be more than one group, but, um, and you don't have to send anything to Greg, but uh, it'll be another group where what we can do is, during that time, is, is speak in tongues, and then ask God for the interpretation of it. Um, so you can go ahead and do that now as, as, as I'm wrapping up and, and that'll give us an opportunity, uh, to get to that. And then also, um, if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to answer those. But so from a practical sense, what is, what does this look like? Because, you know, I think sometimes today we're still a little, we can be a little bewildered or freaked out or when something like this happens and, and, um, like they were, you know, in the past and in the early church, but, Typically what happens is, like for me, if, if I feel, um, you know, I begin to speak in tongues and I feel like there's something with that, one of the first things I do is I ask the Lord, is there an interpretation for this? Or Lord, what are you wanting to say? And if he gives it to me, then I go to leadership in the meeting and say, hey, this is what I feel like the Lord's doing. Um, so from there, if you could hear somebody speak in tongues and something kind of moves in your spirit. I, I want to tell you, it's, it's not necessarily like you hear angels' harps going and all of this stuff. It's all of a sudden you feel the prompting of the Lord. Just like if we've practiced before during the prophetic, and you said, okay, Lord, give me a prophetic word for Tom. And um, you thought for a little while, and all of a sudden something just jumped in your spirit. 
I, I think God speaks to us way more than we realize. And so uh, what I would, what I do is if someone speaks in tongues, I quickly ask the Lord, is there an interpretation for that? And if he, if something jumps into my spirit, then I go right back and Lord, I feel like you're saying this and then you make it forward. So the practical steps of it are as simple as like we have with anything else, very similar to prophecy, though it's a different gift and has, you know, a different purpose. It's still that aspect of there's a tongue that's given and Lord, what are you, what are you wanting to say? It's the beauty of it. It's the Holy Spirit that's doing this. And so all we have to do is ask him, what is he wanting to say? And it enables us to be able to connect with him and continue, um, you know, in, in manifesting the gift that he wants to manifest. Um, I am going to try somehow to get out of this. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this. All right. Um, so uh, I guess at this time, what we can do is, is, are there any questions? Tom, I think someone asked a question about personal prayer language. I'm having in trouble. Tongues. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it's tongues of personal prayer language and the same, I do believe it's from the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of times when it comes to um, someone praying uh, in tongues and saying it's a prayer language, it's the same. I would say it's, you're saying the same thing because what's happening is it's the spirit within you uh, communing to God. Sometimes intercession can come out of this and, and other things like that. But to answer your question, uh, yeah, it's your spirit um, connecting with God. And um, there's a communion that's going on there. We don't understand what's going on, but as a result, we're being built up and encouraged at the same time. Tom, I had a question from a, a mom's perspective. <laughs> I, I find myself praying in the spirit um, just when I'm doing dishes or laundry or, or something. And um, my daughter has been very interested in it. And I wondered how... Okay. Um, yeah, just about children and young children and talking to them about praying in the spirit. What advice you have? Yeah, I love that. Look, here's, here's the great thing. You know, there is no junior Holy Spirit. So um, one of the things that we've always done is we've always made it a priority to whatever we're engaging in spiritually, praying in tongues, praying for someone, laying on hands. We always include our children. Mm -hmm. um, if need arises, we all get together and pray. It's common at birthday parties. We, we prophesy for each other and ask the Lord. And the mm -hmm. reason is because I want it to be that natural setting for our children to where the questions are exactly what you're saying. Mommy, you know, what are you doing? And you go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm praying in tongues. Well, what's tongues? And you explain them. Now, of course, in the age they're at, it's a different level, but I know multiple times that a kid's grown up, Michelle has said, hey, do you want to pray with me on this? And they said, mm -hmm. yeah. So she's prayed for them uh, to receive the gift of tongues. And it, it's been amazing because over the years, all, all of our kids do. And so we engage that way, but it came just from that about of you being, this is who you are and allowing it to be expressed in front of your children. And then they go, hey, mom, can, can I do that? And you go, yeah, let me, let me explain it to you. Let me pray for you. And then you can join with me. I think that's wonderful. I, I highly recommend that with, you know, any of the kids and even in situations where I find the more natural we are in, in, in being a Christian with manifestation mm -hmm. gifts, the more natural it becomes for our children. The more they yeah. see it, it becomes that's, that's what they grew up with. That's what they know. And so mm -hmm. as a result, they're like, wow, that's, that's amazing. You know, how, how do I get some of this? Yeah. Do you have anything Thank to add with him? Pardon me? I was, I was asking William if he had something to add. Let's see, on that question, um, one, of the, one, one of the ways I, I, I deal with uh, or, or, or make it understandable to a novice in terms of your prayer language and the gift of tongues is that our prayer language comes from Holy Spirit in us 
up to the throne. The gift of tongues comes to the throne to the person with the gift. If you can understand what I just said. Because when we're praying in the spirit out of our, our prayer, personal prayer language, our tongues, it's edifying us. It's going up. Mm. When Holy Spirit is, is the gift that the Lord wants to speak to the church, it comes down to that person with the gift and they give it out. And someone gives the interpretation of that. Yeah. I don't know if that helps anyone. Mm, that's good. That's very good. I don't want to confuse you. No. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I think... I think to, to Caitlin's question, I, I love the idea of, of bringing our children into this. And uh, children are naturally inquisitive and they, they get it easier than adults do because they, they, their brains are less geared to wanting to control everything. So a childlike ability to just let your spirit speak. And so it's, it's a joy for children. And, and I think, the, you know, once kids get it, you can say, to them, well, just speak in tongues, stop. You now just speak in English. What's the Lord mm -hmm. saying? And they can practice this, and yeah. um, it becomes a, an easy thing for them to speak in tongues, prophesy, you know, interpret interpret the tongues, and then speak in tongues a little bit, interpret the tongues. And I've known some families who've made this a, like a game on the way to school. You know, like, all right, let's all bring tongues, you know, catch it, and and it, yeah. it becomes an easy thing. It's not a weird thing. It becomes a thing that the kids love to do, and they just, you know, and. Because there's the point. I mean, I think this is why it's such a gateway gift. It stir it provokes that. Um, it provokes, it trains your mind to say, you're not in charge of this. The, I'm going to let my spirit mm -hmm. commune with God. And you can listen in and you can, you know, you can, but, but you're not in charge. You don't get to lay the ground rules here. So, so good. Yeah. Hmm. I'm kind of a Johnny come lately a little bit uh, um, with, uh, with, um, uh, the gifts and tongues. My my training and my background is uh, ee, uh, dispensational and cessationist, and so I'm doing a lot of catch up. Um, and uh, I have seen um, it's 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 amazing, Greg, as you were saying, or as um, um, the young lady, the mom, was saying, if you can go ahead and catch somebody at the infancy stage in their faith and expose them to the proper gateway manifestation gift, you've got somebody that it's just natural is falling off a log to go ahead and walk in the spirit and prophesy and tongues and so forth. But then you have somebody like me who tries to work out of my head and have a um, seminary background that I'm trying to unravel. So um, I, I don't know. I have a lot of questions. Um, I do have a prayer language, praise God, but it's very infant. And, um, and I, I think if I realize how much it was important for building my spirit, my soul up, I would go ahead and let it grow and develop more. Yeah. But there are some hesitations. Uh, can you speak to that? Can you speak to this old uh, crusty crusader speak who's trying to, <laughs> yeah. try to, try to catch up in the spirit? How's that? Yeah, I, I think um, the simple truth is that there are things that our spirits can wrap their arms around that our minds cannot. So uh, Paul speaks about, uh, for example, the, the peace of Christ that trans uh, that uh, by prayer and petition present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends um, your understanding or God, your heart and mind. So you can... It's the same with the love of God that you that you be filled, that you experience, that you that you taste this, that you know this love that surpasses knowledge. So so there are there are multiple things like this that the, the Bible speaks to that we, we can experience them, but they they would blow our minds. Uh, to know, to experience a love that goes beyond knowledge, to experience a peace that goes beyond our minds. And so this idea that the, the we're we're spirit. Because God is spirit and we're made in his image. We're spirit beings uh, and currently housed in a body and we, we have a soul. And that our soul is, is connected to this planet, right? We, we have five senses, but our spirit is connected to the spiritual realm. And so our spirit can reach in and hear things from God. And uh, God designed us that my body, soul, and spirit are all intermeshed you hit my body hard enough my soul is going to leave my body 
there is a, an interconnectedness and they're designed. So mankind is the only of all of God's creatures supposed to function in the natural realm and in the supernatural realm, effortlessly, seamlessly. Um, and so we have, and that's the point of our spirit. So our spirit can receive things from God and can commune with God. We can, we can, we can grab hold of them. So the question then is, how do I train my spirit? How do I develop a strong spirit? Um, and because my spirit is going to inform my mind, it's, it's going to, it's going to bring information. It's going to offer it to my mind. And I, uh, the, the, the question is not whether our minds should be the deciders they are, that's their role. But that, uh, if we switch off our minds to the, to the reality that these inputs are going to come from the spirit, then our mind is now acting not on our behalf, but against us. So tongues is this beautiful thing, and that's what uh, we were re reading earlier with Tom. He said, when I, when I pray in my spirit, I want, you know, when I pray in the spirit, my mind is unfruitful. My spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. And I absolutely love that piece about tongues because in your prayer language, because you can pray in a prayer language, and, and it's not your brain forming the words. Mm -hmm. That prayer language flows out of your spirit. And that's why tongues is such an edifying reality because the more we speak in tongues, the more it develops our spirit and trains our minds to listen in to the spirit realm. That's why it's the gateway gift. Because as we pray in tongues, as we're uttering mysteries from within our spirit, our brains haven't yet caught up with the mystery that we just uttered. And so sometimes in, in this moment of revelation, when, you, when you're interpreting a tongue, you're uttering the mysteries along with the people. Sometimes interpretation i go man that's pretty good i've never heard of that that's you know that's pretty sweet because that's the point point. and so i think for me um the the, the best you know we, we were all taught corinthians 13 you know where there are prophecies they will cease and where there are tongues they'll be still and and you know where there's knowledge it will pass away that's corinthians 13 but but paul in that because that's been taught right that's the thing like tongues are not for today but in that scripture paul is talking about the now and what's going to be when we see Jesus face to face. Cause he says, now we prophesy in part, but then we'll know completely as we are fully known. Now we see like through a glass darkly, but then we'll see him face to face. Now, you know, it's just, uh, it's just like a little bit of light, but there we see everything. So Paul is juxtapositioning the now, what we're experiencing now to what's going to be like when we face to face. And when we're face to face, we won't need tongues. An interpretation or prophecy anymore because we're face to face with Jesus. So he he, um, he says when when the perfection comes, the imperfect will disappear. So Paul is very clearly talking about the, the time when this manifestation gifts will cease us in the presence of Jesus when we stand with him. So so my advice to you, Tom, is just to is to keep your mind, but to teach it um, that it, uh, teach it its limitation. Because your spirit can grab hold of things in God that your mind has no access to. And, uh, you know, just, just how do you train your mind to listen to your spirit? Because your spirit is indwelt. Anyone who joins himself to the Lord becomes one with him in spirit, the scripture says. So your spirit and the Holy Spirit have become one. So the Holy Spirit whispers into your spirit. Your spirit whispers into your mind. That's the weak link right there. Because if your mind shuts down, you the you've you've shut off the spirit realm now you just now you're just stuck in the natural what what your abilities and what your uh, experience can handle and that's a that's a tiny microcosm of what you could access if you if you trained your mind to listen to your spirit yeah but tongues is uh, praying in tongues is a good way to do that and and as i said why don't you try this I mean, you know, I love I love being alone in the car because I, I don't I don't have to look weird to anybody else. But I can I can speak in tongues and I can cut straight into English and just prophesy and say and just do the interpretation. This is what I feel like the Lord is saying. And it's wonderful. Try it. It'll be cool. You know. So. I have right. a question. Yeah, go on, share. Um, I just when we break into groups, do you want us all speaking in tongues at once? The ones comfortable doing that or one at a time how would you like that to look i would suggest because uh, uh, it's going to be slightly different um, um tom and william are going to lead the group of people uh, who are going to pray for the first time so that's going to be a wonderful wonderful group and then the, the other groups are going to meet and what i'd suggest you do is just um have 
everybody pray in tongues just for a minute or so. And then everybody just be listening for the interpretation. And then you can do the interpretations one by one and go around. And then, and if there's time, you can do another minute of praying in tongues and then listening and then, and then do the interpretation of that. Um, so you don't have to do it one by one. I think everybody praying together and you can, you can tune in and listen to somebody. Um, and so that, that should be a fun little event. So we'll try that now.